Early one morning, John was driving through the woods near his cabin. He suddenly stopped after seeing a wolf trapped in a trap. He parked his car, then approached slowly, looking through the bushes. In the forest John encountered a wolf, it seemed that his leg stuck in a trap and tried to free himself, but then he started to give up and lie down again, and the wolf seemed tired as if he had given up hope. John was shocked and wanted to help the animal, but when he approached him, he felt afraid and tried to pull the chains. John backed away and did not want to risk hurting himself, but then something happened that he did not expect. The wolf was clearly a female, but that alone wasn't the surprise. Her breasts were full of milk, meaning there had to be puppies somewhere waiting impatiently for their mother, and that is if they were still alive. Newborn puppies cannot survive for a long time without their mothers, so if John wanted to reunite the young with their mother, he had to act quickly. He could not approach the she-wolf without fearing to hurt him, because the wild animal was unpredictable in such a difficult situation. The she-wolf was in a miserable condition, as she began to lose a lot of blood as a result of the injury in her leg, and John realized that if he left her alone, this would mean certain death for her. John didn't want to let it get to this point, after everything he had been through in his life, he had become the type of person who would never give up. He was not ready to abandon this dying wolf. He knew that every second he wasted might mean that this wolf, wolf or one of her cubs would not be able to survive, so he had to act now. John didn't know how to get the wolf's leg out of the trap, but he gathered all his courage and approached. He held the wolf's head with one hand, and with his other hand he pressed the button on the dowel to release it, but it did not open where it was stuck, which is what probably happened when the wolf tried to escape. John did not have time to think, so he asked his friend for help, who quickly opened the trap. Then with all his strength John carried the she-wolf over his shoulder, put her in the trunk, and ran to his hut. He placed the lupus next to the heater because the temperature drops, and once the house is warmed. He was able to examine the lupus secretions, clean them and treat them, as he knew exactly what to do due to his medical training. Her leg was injured, but fortunately it was not broken. If he had waited any longer, he would have surely lost her. Now he hoped that he would be able to save her life in time as well, as signs of life gradually began to appear on her. When she snarled for the first time, he knew that she would be fine, knowing that she would wake up sooner or later. John decided to take her out to the balcony. After he took care of the mother wolf and she was doing better, he went looking for the cubs, but where could John find a nest of wolf pups? The puppies can't be too far away, as the she-wolf never strays far from her cubs, given his military background. He has a knack for survival and tracking, and will have to use all his skills to save the puppies. He searched the area for clues, and finally found what he was looking for. It was hidden, but there was a hole in the ground. Fortunately for him, this was the hole he was looking for. The only problem now was getting the baby wolves out. They have been trained to stay inside until they hear their mother's voice, even if it means they die. John was, was determined to get them out. He tried in every way to imitate the sound of the wolf, but he did not succeed. He was thinking of going to the den when suddenly a baby wolf came out and howled in hunger. Perhaps this was one of the main reasons why he was willing to risk going out without hearing his mother's voice, after the first puppy came out, the others quickly followed, unable to carry the four puppies together, he carefully placed them all in a bag. Although the idea of sticking your head in a wolf's den is not a good idea, however, John had to check if there were any other pups at the time, the idea that he might have left someone behind was unacceptable, so he had to make sure, he lay on his stomach and crawled inside. Fortunately, the den was not as deep as he had imagined. He searched well, but no other puppies were found. With this, he felt as if he was leaving with a clear conscience, knowing that he had left no puppies behind. He carried the bag in which he put the puppies and returned it to their mother, who heard the whimpering of her puppies and woke up. John placed the puppies and let them go to their mother one by one, I hope that his smell on the puppies will not cause the mother to reject them. The puppies recognized their mother and all bounced towards her. She began to smell the thing that took John's breath away for a moment, and to ask, will you recognize them? The dangerous adventure turned into an emotional moment when she started meeting the puppies. She lay down to let them breastfeed. The wolf had been with John for some time. She must be hungry and thirsty, so he brings her pieces of meat to eat. Although she did not trust him, she gladly accepted the food he offered her. 
since she had no other option. John had to go out every day to get fish or meat for the flies and to bring the pot. He left the door of his house open so that the puppies could enter to warm themselves. But he did not expect from them to invite friends to visit. When John returned one day, he was very shocked, where his garden was full of a pack of wolves. Those who came to check on the she-wolf. It was clear that her family was looking for her and her children. John froze in fear, he was not prepared to face a group of wolves in his garden. The puppies came to him fast. They were very happy to see him. But the big wolves all turned around, they stood up, raised their heads, and began to howl. They looked like they were ready to attack. Then suddenly one of the wolves let out a loud bark. It was the she-wolf that John helped. As soon as she barked all the other wolves retreated. However, John quickly entered his hut and closed the door behind him. After a few days, the wolf's condition improved. Soon she was able to stand again and even walk around. In the morning a few days later, she barked at her children. Then they were all guided and followed her. John understood that they were leaving, he never saw the herd, the she-wolf, or the puppies again. But he knew that the she-wolf and her cubs owed him their lives. What would you do if you were in John's place? Share your opinions in the comments below. See you in the next video.